Yo, everybody, I'm glad everybody's here. I'm glad everybody's tuning in. Of course, you know, I love doing these video pods because I get a lot of my friends across professional sports, music, entertainment, and everything, right? So this is going to be fun today because this guy here is like one of my favorite guys to talk to. I think when you talk about class, everything about this guy, man, he's, he's, he's one of the best, man. Like he, you know, I cover baseball as well as you guys know. I do cover basketball. You guys know me for basketball, but I do cover baseball. And this guy is like one of the best guys, like I said, to talk to. Like, he has a lot of accolades. This guy um, represents his country definitely, and he knows his history about baseball. We're gonna talk about that today. So this is gonna be really, really fun. But before we get him in here, I want I want you guys to let you know. Definitely follow him on IG and Twitter. Give him a shout out. Hey, when it's time to get those All Star votes in, we got to get those All Star votes in for him. You guys know what to do. We we go through the same routine. So before that's gonna get him in, man. So I'm gonna bring him in right now, man. So you guys know who this guy is. Hey, right here, right? what's up, brother? Hey, hey, man, what's up, man? So everybody, by the way, man, this this is one of my favorite, not only just favorite guys, man. To talk, this is one of my favorite players, by the way, man. Elvis Andrews is in the building, man. What's up, Elvis? Hey, what's up, brother? Doing good, man. Just chilling, you know. He's staying at home, staying safe, brother. Man, so man, we can we might as well get into it, man. So let's let's talk about this quarantine life, man, because. Right now, I'm I'm looking at the time, right? So I'm so used to about right right around this time, you'll be in the cages. You probably going through your routine or whatever. But obviously, right now you're at home. I know you had a good workout today, more than likely. So, what's it been like to be at home? What are you doing now? Because I know obviously you have family and everything, but outside, are you watching movies, TV, or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the things that I did, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, probably like three or four weeks ago, was. Uh, you know, kind of trying to get a schedule because I think that's like one of the toughest thing to do. Like, because uh, you know, I'm I'm used to my routine, right? Especially yeah. you know when we were in spin training, like I know what I have to do when I wake up, and then you go by then. So going back, it was like I kind of treated it a little bit like off season, mm -hmm. uh, but the you know you can now go out or try not to go out. So it's like okay, let me let me try to do a good routine here at home that that I know I can keep my mind busy. I enjoy my family, you know, keep growing, keep learning, uh, and just, you know, just don't don't go crazy. So that's that's what I've been doing, and, and I have a really good uh, routine going on right now, and, and, you know, it's been really good. Man, so beyond that, man, like, I'm going to you got a family, got the kiddos, of course, man. Like, I know they keep you busy, so <laughs> let me ask you this. As a professional athlete, which one is harder, maintaining the kids running around with them or just going through the workouts every day? Oh, no, the kicks for sure, man. Uh, workouts is, you know, it's part of the life. It's, it's easy, actually. That's when I get to, to you know, get all the stress out and relax, literally. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you do something that gets you better, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I always say that. Uh, but the kids, five minutes, and then they, you know, they get you tired, man. Like, no, no, no matter if you do super heavy squats, if you're taking care of your kids for five to ten minutes, you're gonna work, you know. You're gonna get all wear down, but uh, but it's been a bless, man. I think that that's one of the things that, that I put in perspective. Uh, I'm never gonna have this time, uh, probably until I retire, uh, to during this month uh, spend that much time at home with my kids and quality time with my family. So, you know, I'm trying to get the 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 most that I can get off, and uh, you know, just go day by day. All right, so I know you're a big sports fan, man. So I got to ask you this. So obviously right now you're able to get maybe a little TV time, but have you checked out this Bulls documentary yet? Yeah, yeah, I saw a little bit. I didn't. The only reason, I, and a lot of guys think I'm crazy, uh, but one thing that I hate is like, I don't know if it happened to you, like if I'm watching a, a show, I hate what is only three, four episodes. Like yeah. if the whole season is going to be 40 episodes. Yeah. I can't wait. Like, I have that in myself. I can't wait, no matter how good that documentary is. I can't wait until the whole documentary is out. And then, for sure, you know, I'll sit up. I'll go to the, you know, to my theater and, and just spend the whole night watching. I just, you know, I kind of hate to watch one or two episodes. I'm not that type of guy that can only watch one episode and go to bed. I'm really, I'm, you know, I, I'm really crazy to watch the whole thing. So I watch a little bit, but I was like, I'm going to wait until... The whole documentaries, um, you know, all the episodes are out, and and then I'll watch it for sure. Man, so any outside of that, man, you've been watching any Netflix? I know big thing right now is obviously um, 
I can't think of it right now. I know the tiger. What is it with the guy? Oh. Is yeah. and then of course, I can't think of it. I'm having a brain fart right now. But that, and then obviously <laughs> Ozark. You been watching anything? Oh, yes. like that? I'm, I'm watching the Ozark. That's one yes. of the shows that yes. I'm watching right now. It's pretty yeah, cool. I love pretty, Ozark. Pretty dope. Yeah, Ozark is amazing, bro. Like I, I, I finished Ozark, man. Like I had to. Dude, like I, I usually, I'm never focused to watch anything. I usually like fall asleep or just like quit watching it or go back to it. I literally watched everything. Trust me. What season are you on? You still on the first season? I'm in the second season. Oh, you second? Oh, you you haven't seen nothing yet, man. I can't wait yeah, to see the big man. It's gonna be this is gonna be amazing. So, man. So, <laughs> obviously, um, let's get into some baseball, man. So, one thing I always wanted to ask you, and I, you know, I appreciate that you respect everything about the game of baseball. So, like, one thing about you. You're a student of the game. I, I watch you sometimes, obviously, being a part of the media. I can sit there and watch you, just study guys, how they hit. Uh, I see you in the cages a lot. I see you working out a lot on the field and stuff. But what made you want to play baseball? Well, for me, to, you know, coming from Venezuela, uh, so, you know, everybody knows that in Venezuela, like almost every uh, Latin American country, uh, baseball is huge. And, and it's not only huge as a sport. I think it's the the – the best way for us to to have a future, you know, to to have a better future, to be able to help and taking mm -hmm. care of your family and friends, uh, you know, that doesn't have the opportunity like 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 we do. And uh, so, you know, such a, such a young age, uh, watching my brothers, I think that my brothers are the one of the reasons, you know, being the third one, being the the youngest one, you know, my two brothers, my two older brother. Uh, Erickson and Errol, they play they play ball. My dad used to play ball, so you know it's like they say, you know, it's in the blood, it's in the family, and then just you know, just watching play uh, and getting better, you know, trying to you know make me wanted to be better and trying to beat him for sure. Man, so speaking of like Venezuela and the baseball culture there, man, like you know, I have opportunity to obviously go to many different locker rooms and many different like venues and stuff, right? And I see the flag all the time. And then I go back and I look at like the list of players. I mean, you had a, you guys got a, a phenom right now that plays on Atlanta Braves over there as well, man. Like, oh, Cunha, like yeah. yeah, Ronald Cunha Jr., man. Like, it's just the history of Venezuela baseball. Can you talk about that, man? Because like a lot of people don't realize there is a lot of guys, man, especially from the MLB standpoint, not even just including the guys that just played there, but guys that came over to the major leagues. Can you talk about the popularity of like those players and the players that come to mind for you? Oh, no, it's huge, man. Uh, you know, like in here in the U.S., so many sports. Uh, but back home, uh, baseball is number one. Uh, probably soccer, you know, mm -hmm. is second. So, yeah, like like you mentioned, it's so many, like, you know, it's history of our of our game back, you know, I mean, starting the first guy they played was uh, Chico Carrasquel, played okay. with, the, with, the, with the White Sox. Uh, I don't remember the year. It was <laughs> a lot of years ago. Uh mm -hmm. But after that, I mean, you, you got guys like Luis Aparicio, which is, uh, you know, the only Hall of Fame that we had. You have uh, David Concepcion, the, the play for the Red Machine, yeah. uh, when, you know, Pete Rose and, and Joe Morgan were there. Yeah, Tony uh, Perez, yeah. And, and moving on, you know, you got guys, uh, you know, this time uh, knowing, you know, like Omar Vizquel, which is my idol. Yeah. Uh, Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Uh, you got Victor Martinez, uh, Migi, which is, you know, the biggest, yeah. I believe, son, and future Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, you got Kim Felix. Uh, I mean, Johan Santana. And, I mean, there's so many other guys that I'm, you know, left in, you know, let, letting away. But uh, it's, it's, it's good, man. I think that's one of the great things growing up in Venezuela, especially in my hometown, Maracay. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, you have a lot of role models. Guys that, that did it right, they played the game right, respect the game, and, and, and did a, you know, a lot of amazing things in the community, and, and they keep doing it. You know, it's just the way, the way we are, the way, uh, you know, the values that, that our, our family always raise and, 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 and want you to become as a, as a growing man. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of story, man. It's a lot. It's a lot of guys that paved the way for, you know, for me, and, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, you're trying to keep following that and keep paving the way for the, for the next, for the future. Man, I just think it's crazy. Like all those guys that you name, we talking about Hall of Famers, guys that at one point in time were like the guy, like people don't realize how great Johan Santana, I mean, when he was in Minnesota, yeah. dog, that was, 
That was that. Man, yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was crazy, man. Like I hear a lot of players a, talk about that one, man. Like yeah, back to back side, yeah. He was literally <laughs> right. If you if you if you can recall somebody right now, he can easily be you know Jacob DeGraw or, or Max Sercher, you know, type of guy like that, or even like playing to Kershaw, you know, like back to back. Uh, Cy Young, that's not an easy thing to do, and he did it. You know, unfortunately, he got he got injured, and you know, he slowed down in in, in the match in, in New York. But uh, and that guy was the best pitcher, you know, at least you know two years in a row. Yeah, man, and one of my favorite players growing up, Andres Galarraga. I remember when he was on the Rockies, he had the funny stance, man. But that dude, the big cat, he ended up playing for the Rangers, which is ironic. Yeah. He ended up playing for the Rangers. So like that was, man. You you named a lot of great guys. So man. I got to ask you this because, like, I play a lot of MLB the show, right? And I do play softball, and I did play baseball in high school and stuff. But I just don't see how someone can play shortstop. So I got to ask you, man, like, <laughs> what made you want to play shortstop? Because, like, that, to me, you got to have a special kind of, like, mind frame to play shortstop. Like, I just playing in those gaps like that, man. Like, you got to have range to throw the ball. Like, tell me what made you want to play shortstop, man? Because usually outfield's pretty cool. That's usually – like the one position was shortstop, man. You went there. Well, I mean, I think the you know, I, I'm the type of challenge uh, gym guy. You know, I, I love challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. and since I was a little kid, I mean, and you know that you just mentioned it. You know, playing shortstop is such a tough position. I think that and in playing for you know a long period of time gets even harder because you know when you get older, you don't get quicker, you don't get faster. Kind of like you slow a little bit down. And the experience kind of gets you through, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's for me, it's a bit, it's like a detail position. You you have to be always on detail. You have to stay in shape, which I love it. You know, it's not like all the position that you can kind of like get a little bigger here and then. Like I know that I need my you know my agility, I need my reaction, I need my range and my arm to be able to play shortstop. Uh, so that's that's that you know for me, it's challenge. You know, every time I, I go to the off season, it's a challenging off season. Uh, and every year it gets tougher, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but I love it. I love the challenge. I know it's a position that everybody wants to play. But when they start playing it, they're like, ah, you know, I'm gonna move, you know, second yeah. base. I'm gonna move right field. I'm gonna move to another position. And and it's not easy. It's not an easy one. But you know, I think that one of the things growing up in Venezuela, uh, you know, my idol being Omar Vizquel, uh, and he played for social, you know, for all, more than 20 years. So. You know, that's, that's, that's the type of role model that you put, you know, in your head ahead of you and, and you want to follow that. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, I want to, you know, being able to to play 20 years, you know, in my, the same position and, and not too many guys being able to do it. Man, and people don't realize, and I tell baseball fans, you know, being a fan growing up, you know, watching Omar, especially when Roberto Alomar went to Cleveland, like you had those two guys up the middle. Like that was just like watching like an all-star game, man. Like <laughs> the defense is crazy. They make it behind the back throws and the crazy it was just crazy. Then you gotta realize they had Sandy Alomar and catch like it was just crazy, man, watching that team, man. But I gotta ask you this because you come in in the generation right in between like these, like what I call for me personally, obviously Ozzy Smith, those guys that came before you, but then there was a generation that we had Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, no more yeah, Garcia. Yeah, yeah we, we had a lot of great shortstops. And then you come in right behind those guys. And now you got guys like Trevor Story. You know, you got a lot of different guys that are out there. Now, can you talk about the generational now? Because, like, shortstop is such a unique thing. Because back then, it wasn't about guys who hit for power. And then all of a sudden, here comes A-Rod and those guys. Everybody's yeah. hitting power. And now you got guys like you that do it all. You know, you, you hit batting around 300. You're doing your thing. But – so many is diverse now. It's not about like, hey, just great defense. Now guys are like hitting the ball. Like most teams' best hitters are shortstops. Can you talk about that? Yeah, man. I think that you know it's kind of cool because, uh, like you mentioned, you know, I think the generation always change, right? So I think that you know when I came in, it, it was more of you know shortstop playing guy, kind of go back to like playing good defense, uh, doing the little things, uh, you know, like move the runner, bunting here and then, being those. You know, paying the butt guys in the base, uh, and now you know, ten years later, it's kind of going back to, you know, the guys you know playing good defense at the same time hitting mm -hmm. thirty to forty bombs, like you mentioned, like a story, which is a great example. And mm -hmm. it's you know, it's cool, you know, being the middle of that pack. I mean, you know, being you know being the both sides, I think is one of the great things. And then you know, for me to be able to you know still play in that position, you know, over ten years, uh, 
it's, you know, it's been a blast for me. But, uh, you know, it's, like I say, it's, you know, moving on, it's, it's going to get tougher. I know that. But like I say, I love that challenge. And a lot of people is still saying that oh, he's not, he's not going to play short for too long and here and then. And, and that is, those are the things that kind of feed me, you know, to yeah. be better and improve them run. And then I know, you know, in the bottom of my heart, I know that I have enough in my tank to finish my career playing shortstop. Yeah, man. I'm gonna tell people this off the bat. Don't let the smile fool y'all, man. This dude is a he's a high. Hey, don't let the smile and the energy fool. He's a competitive person, man. He's super competitive, man. Don't let it. He, you see Elvis all the time. He's smiling, having a good time. I mean, he appreciates the game. But this dude is a super competitive guy. So I'm letting you guys know now. Yeah, I I've seen it firsthand. So yeah, man. So I'm gonna ask you about legendary players. I'm gonna name some guys, and I want you to tell me what you think about them as players. Okay. And I'm going to name a lot of legends. I'm going to name some current guys. And I'm going to name one of your teammates as well. Okay, okay so I'm going to start off with a simple one. Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, the kid, man. Uh, unbelievable. The natural, I will call it. Uh, just unbelievable. I was able to play, uh, you know, towards his career, towards the end of his career. And uh, talking to him, that guy was just, you know, mind-blowing guy. Wow. Wow, and that's, and you know, and the kid, man, like you said, that's crazy. So one person I, I saw you talking about, and I think it's pretty cool because, like, you know, unfortunately there was tragedy involved in that, but Roberto Clemente, can you talk about Roberto Clemente? Because a lot of, obviously we mean you didn't see him live, but, you yeah. know, there's enough film for us to know, and there's enough, you know, stats that show what he did. Can you talk about Roberto Clemente? No, man, he, he means a lot, uh, you know, from, from the – from the Hispanic community uh, and, and being a Latin America player in the big leagues, I mean, for you know, for for us Latin guys, I mean, Robert Clemente is like you know what Jackie Robinson means for all African Americans. You know, uh, he means a lot. He, he he did it right. That guy was a superstar on and off the field. So you know, it was just unbelievable. And I mean, last year I get to I get to go to Pittsburgh for the first time, mm -hmm. and the first thing I, I did was. Uh, you know, go visit the museum in Pittsburgh, and it was a mine. You know, it opened my mind and blew my mind so well. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, I started seeing the community work, being with the community, with that, with, be that guy, you know, be that role model for the community, not only for, for kids who wanted to play baseball, you know, being a good role model for kids that want to be like you as a, as, as a human being. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think that, you know, learning more about him last year in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, it made me realize and appreciate everything that he did and, and 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 how he paved the way for us. Man, that's and it's crazy, like his story, man, because a lot of times it does get lost because when we start, you know, as fans, we like to put teams together, right? So I put an outfield together. A lot of times, obviously, Griffey gets named and the guy that, like Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds yeah. one of the greatest baseball players ever, right? You know, seven times MVP, I believe, you know, and then yeah. you get the other guy as well. So another name I got for you, man, I think is very interesting. And this is your, this is a former teammate. And I know the relationship with you guys is amazing. But Adrian Beltre. Let's talk about Adrian, <laughs> man. Let's talk about Adrian, man. Uh, well, when they, when they ask me, when they put, which, when they ask me to put him in one war, I always say unique. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think that's one of the hardest things to do in this sport besides playing for 20 years was, like I said, there's not too many guys in the history of baseball that play for 20 years. But when you are a character, then when you see something, you know, when you see a, a silhouette or when you see a, a play mm -hmm. and, and you name that person right away, for me as, as a baseball player uh, and as an athlete, that puts you in another level, you know, in another level, you know, in another yeah. category, like a legendary category. And, and Adrian did that, man. And, he did, you know, he did it the right thing, and he has so much joy, uh, which is kind of crazy because usually you see those guys so, you know, like, you know, eyes focused and like they don't move and they don't smile. And Adrian, he was like literally like a little kid uh, out there in the field. So, you know, I love the way he played. He he meant a lot for me, uh, you know, as a player and as a as a friend, as a brother. Uh, but you know, if 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 I need to use one word, I will say unique. Man, that's awesome. So I got to ask you, though, man. So obviously, we are on delay for playing in the new ballpark. But, man, tell me about this new ballpark, man. So obviously, I'm sure you had a chance to, to scope it out a little bit. You know, what do you think about the new ballpark? Oh, it's unbelievable, brother. It's, it's a mind-blowing. Uh, I think everybody's going to love it. Uh, you know, I was able to go inside a couple of days ago and, and 
actually I stopped, I, you know, I stopped in the short stop just to look around, just to see the view from my office, you know, the, for the rest, you know, for, for the few years coming up. So, and it was unbelievable. Uh, the way you look, uh, the roof, everything, man, you know, like from the batter box, everything just beautiful. It's a beautiful view. And, and I know the fans are going to love it. You're going to love it when you step out there. Uh, and it's going to be no, no crazy summers anymore. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. That's what I want to ask you because that's the unique thing. And I remember like, Dude, I think it was last year, right? It was a game where it was like 108, bro. I remember like everybody's out there just like, what is this, man? Like, this is ridiculous. Are you going to actually miss? I know it sounds weird because you're like, well, it's hot. You gonna, you definitely want to get in more natural playing weather, but are you going to miss that? Because that was sort of an advantage for you guys, right? Like, in a way, because you guys are used to that heat, but a lot of guys, when they came here and played like that, say the Yankees come here in midsummer, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's they're bad. dying. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I think I'm, I, I am going to miss him. I know a bunch of the guys that, you know, been playing one or two years, you know, it, it won't matter for them. They're actually going to be happy. Uh, but for me, you know, the, you know, I played my first 10 years, first 11 years in that heat and, and you know, have such a great memories, you know, in that heat too. I can mention, you know, in those years, it was an advantage. I mean, when they come here, they were thinking two things, you know, get beat up by us and playing in this heat, so which is like, which it was like playing in the in, in a sauna. That's how it feels actually. Bro, that, that, but uh, yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. I know the body is gonna be in a better shape for sure. You know, towards the end of the season. But uh, but I can't wait, man. It's gonna it's gonna be fun, and, and I know everybody, all the fans are gonna love it. Man, so like obviously memories, man, come to mind from the older stadium. I mean, we got a lot of memories. You know, I have memories there. Obviously, you have great memories there, man. Can you talk about? Any favorite memory from, you know, that stadium that comes to mind for you? Well, I mean, I had a few. I had quite a few for sure. Uh, you know, my debut, I think, is, you know, it's a dream come true for me. You know, it's always going to be top three. But I think my my number one, uh, you know, got to be when we beat the Yankees, you know. Uh, being able to, you know, going to the Wolves here for the first time as an organization and, and, and just beating the Yankees, which I didn't know the – you know, I didn't know the history of, of them beating us in the first round all the time. A lot, yeah. Uh, so when I find that out, I was like, wow, it was, you know, it was even sweeter, uh, you know, beating them uh, that year. And, and, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, man. Man, and, you know, that was like for, especially during that time, because that was a time when, like, the Mavericks, I think, obviously, I think they won the championship during that time. And, like, it was like everything was at a, at a high level here in the DFW, man. So, yeah, yeah man, that was a crazy, crazy time. So, I got to ask you this, man. Was there any particular pitcher that you enjoyed? I mean, obviously, coming up to the challenge. But was there a particular pitcher, man, that you that you had to study extra for, man, like, when it was time to go against them? Like, was it that one guy that gave you a lot of issues, man? Uh. Well, there's actually two guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one righty, one lefty. Okay. That way, that way, that way you can you know picture both sides. I mean, from the righty, I mean, uh, my boy King Felix, Felix Hernandez. Ooh. He yeah. was dude, and and like yeah. I have good numbers against him personally, but believe me, every hit, it was it was you know I worked for every every single shot, every every giant shot, yeah. uh, was worked hard. Uh, it just you know, it was up to up to a hundred, and then you know, twelve to six curveball mm -hmm. movement. It was just, it was not a fun time. Uh, and the, from the left side, and it's still, and it's still super tough, and the toughest pitcher for me, uh, Chris Hell. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, that's. That, I love facing lefty. I don't care who's who lefty I'm facing. He's the only lefty that every time he's you know pitching, he's like kind of like. You know, you see the lineup, and you're like, wow. like, okay, can this game? You know, can this game kind of? <laughs> can yeah, we they got work with the Red Sox. <laughs> and then you deal with like three of them. Yeah. I uh, know. So I mean, there's not too many guys. Chu hate him. Chu never play when when Cell pitching. So, but no, uh, Chris Cell is the toughest lefty and probably one of the toughest pitcher I ever faced. Man, is there any like pitcher from the past that you wish you had a chance to face? Like, if you could have a dream matchup, like, would it? Who would? Let me ask you a question. I'll, I'll make one better for you. Let's just say this. Say if you get part, you get put part of a dream team. You play shortstop. Who will be the second baseman that you like all time? Right? You can't name a teammate. So we're gonna make this a little more unique. Who will be the second okay. baseman? 
Oh, Alomar for sure. Roberto Alomar. Okay. Roberto Alomar, yeah. yeah. He's he's a hot, you know, highlight, highlight leaving players. So he'll be he'll be my second base. That'd be nice to turn some double plays with him. All right, so who will be the pitcher that you want to face from a dream, like a dream scenario? Who will be the pitcher you want to face? Say if it's bottom of the ninth, man, two outs, full count, and you got a chance and you can get that hit. Who will be the pitcher that you would want to face that's an all-time great? Oh, as an all-time? Well, you mean like a hard pitcher or just a pitcher? That I'm just a pitcher general. So you can have a closer if you want to, if you want to go Mariano or if you want to go with a Dennis Eckersley or if you want to go with a starter. No, no, I'll, face, I'll face Mariano. So I think yeah. a guy that I will – uh, be Pedro Martinez. Oh man, Pedro. Yeah, I did. I didn't get it because when I got to the league, I think I think if he played '09, I think he was in the national league, so I couldn't. He was in the Mets, the Mets. Yeah. Yeah, but of Pedro, I would I would love to, you know, see him, you know, play from behind him or, or like face him. I think I know he was gonna be probably like an hour, like a you know broken bat, but uh, yeah, it's just you know you see the highlights and that guy was unbelievable. All right, one last baseball thing. So I always ask this, and this is something important, obviously, for you because I know you love giving back to the game and love teaching kids things about the game. What advice would you give a young baseball player or an upcoming baseball player? What advice would you give them, man? Like a lot of times it's easy to say, hey, man, you need to work on your game, but obviously you have a better thing because you came in young. Like that's a rare thing as well. Like, you came in as a young player. So can you can you give any advice to like the young, the young adults and even the young kids? Well, I mean, I think the 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 first thing, and, and that's one of the things that I that I advise them when, and and sometimes when I say these advice, they're kind of like you know look to me like you know they're hoping for something else like a you know hitting advice or a ground ball mm -hmm. advice or something. My advice for all the kids, and that's one of the things that I will teach my kid if he wants to play professional in the future, have passion for the game and like love the game, mm -hmm. like search like you know like research for the game. I think it, it, when you love this game a lot, like like I do, or like I know, uh, you know, everybody in the big leagues that play has for the game. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go through like a slump or, or things are not going well, you know, it's like it's that was gonna get you out. You know, the love of the game, uh, yeah. the passion, the knowledge, and, and knowing the, the you know the history of the game is gonna make you appreciate this game ten times better, man. And and I think the you know, baseball is a, you know, it's a pastime, you know, it's a, the, the, the oldest uh, pastime game in, in, in the U.S. And, and it's cool, you know, when you get to see footage of, you know, Roberto Clemente or, or Junior Man. when he was in the first year uh, or, or, you know, Jackie Robinson, which his day was a few a few days ago. And, and, and then you see that, you see Babe Ruth, you see Lou Gehry, uh, Mickey Mantle, Man. and then, you know, like for me, it's amazing. Like, see uh, videos of the Fenway Park. You know, when 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 those guys with Ted Williams was hitting them, and then me playing in the same field, that's priceless because that's it's you know it's a piece of story that not too many people get to experience. So for me, I always give this advice and and what passion for the game, love for the game, and understanding for the game will give you is one is gonna be principles, you mm -hmm. know, values of mm -hmm. how to play the game right. Because I think that's why, you know, right now young guys sometimes see the game wrong and, and, and want it to be like, oh, I play the game my way. Uh, and they don't understand when people say, you know, respect the game. You yeah. know, it's hard for you to respect the game if you don't understand or you don't know the past of what you're playing. So I think that for any kid right now, especially, you know, young kids, it's about that. Like, you know, you know, ask for, you know, watch old movies, you know, see yeah. old games. You know, find find somebody, you know, from the past that, that you, you you can research, uh, mm -hmm. and after you do that, everything just come easier because I mean, you know, the physically and, and the mental side is gonna come when you have passion for something. So that's that's the advice that I always give to everybody, uh, uh, especially you know that's the first one I will give to my kids when it grows is you know love the game, man. When you love the game, everything else you know you'll, you'll figure it out for sure. Yeah, man, and I tell people this all the time, and I can contest this for you, man. Like, you would never think that you have played baseball for so long because every time I've seen you, it's like no matter the situation, no matter how bad the previous game was, you come in with a new energy every day, and it's it's a positive energy, man. And I think that's one thing people don't – even in my profession, we take that for granted sometimes that we're there. Like, right now, we're not able to be there, so 
it's kind of like, man, we miss it. But then a lot of times you get complacent and things like that. So I definitely agree with you. So I got to ask you, man, about these uniforms, though, man, because <laughs> I, I like the Sunday blue. But I want to ask you, what do you, what, what, what do you think about the new uniforms? I like it. I mean, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a pain in the butt for clubhouse for the clubhouse manager yeah. <laughs> he's gonna have to clean like a thousand different uniform every day uh but i know i like him i like it i really like him uh they're cool you know they're like uh there is they're a mix you know old school and new school yeah uh, the new design so i know that people are gonna love it they're gonna love the 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 blue the baby blue the blue powder they're gonna love that one because it looks actually it looks funky but when you put him on when you hold with all the shoes and the colors I mean, the fans are going to love it, and they love it already. But, uh, you know, I think it's pretty much the same, like the red, the blue. The white one has, like, a new design with the letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it was kind of it was kind of like the same font of the old, old school yeah. uniform. Yeah. So I, I do like it, man. And with the new stadium, it's going to look uh, pretty dope. All right, man. So speaking of sneakers, man, like, you know me. I got to talk sneakers with you, so – <laughs> you have a teammate, Jesse Chavez, that is ridiculous when it comes to sneakers because he has yeah. about 40 cleats in his, you know, 40 pair of spikes in his in his in his in this little area. But man, like I look over at your at your you know spot and then I see like Jordan Elevens. I start seeing all kinds of stuff, man, that you don't really see a lot of guys. Yeah. But I noticed the game of baseball now is starting to transition to where guys are wearing like Jordan Retro. So I gotta ask you, what is like your favorite sneakers, man, that you like to wear? Uh, I, I'm a classic guy. Uh, I think that, you know, I changed through the year. There's some months that I want to buy every shoe that I see, yeah. but, uh, towards the end, I always end up wearing the same, you know, my Jordans, the one that you saw. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, right now I start buying a little bit more sneaker cause I bought like the, the first, the, 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 the air ones I buy for my, for my kid. Mm -hmm. And so every time that I buy something for my kid, it's kind of like I want to, you know, have the same shoe. Yeah. Uh, so that now I start kind of like buying more stuff for me. But uh, I'm a really, I'm a really, I'm a Nike guy. I always wear Nike. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I ever wear any other brand than Nike. And, you know, really blessed that, you know, I'm a sponsor by Nike. So, it's, you know, I get to see and and, and, and wear uh, any, any Nike that I want. But, uh, you know, I'm a really classic guy. I don't really try too many stuff yeah man i like the way that you like do color placement on on your spikes man because like you showed me a few last year on video but i gotta ask you this say for instance like obviously now everybody the nba allows guys to wear any colors so let's say baseball decides out of nowhere hey you can wear any color on your spikes you want to what's gonna be the first like inspired shoe is it gonna be the venezuelan flag color um, or is it gonna be what is what would it be yeah, that's one of the things that I was talking to uh, the Lino, the Lino yeah. Shields. Yeah. Uh, he's big on shoes too, and 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 he's he knows a guy that does you know the the art on the shoe and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I talked to him last year uh, about it, and uh, I want to do for for weekends, you know, player weekends, which you can go crazy any color, any design in your shoe. I want to do you know, like a Venezuelan shoe and I want to do an American flag because I become a citizen last year. So Man. I want to do something like that. I want to do something good, you know, on uh, I was trying to do something good for uh, Jackie Robinson Day also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do have a few ideas uh, that I'm going to do this year because uh, I believe and I'm hoping we're still playing this year. So uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If not, you know, I'll, I'll save it for next year. Yeah, I, I think I'm about to start talking to a couple of Nike people at, up there at the top office. I might have to, I might have to make a special request. Say, hey man, we need a, we need an Elvis Andrews PE man. Like we need, we need, we need, we need, <laughs> we, need we need a PE, we need a PE man. Like we gotta get you in the player exclusive. I mean, you got some nice colorways that you put together. But other than that, man, like one thing I do want to ask you about, and this is also in sneakers because obviously we had a great basketball player that did pass away, and I know you talked about him a lot. Could you talk about what Kobe Bryant meant to you, man? Because like. I remember asking you about playing 2K, but then the first thing you kind of brought up was like Kobe Bryant and Paul George. So Kobe Bryant was your guy, man. He talked about Kobe Bryant and his impact for you as a professional athlete. Yeah, no, Kobe was big, man. I think the, I mean, the, the way I can explain it is, you know, Kobe was, uh, the Michael Jordan was, you know, for the guys in the 90s. You know, like I born 88 and I did watch Jordan when I was like probably like six, seven. Yeah. Uh, but growing up, you know, it was Kobe. It was Kobe time. It was Kobe League. So 
you know, I was able to uh, actually the first jersey that I bought was for the the US, USA uh, national team, and it was Kobe Bryant and my brother. I, actually, I gave it to my brother like five years ago because he loved Kobe Bryant also. Yeah. And, and now I'm trying to, you know, after after the tragic uh, accident that happened, uh, I want to get my jersey back. Uh, get it back. Yeah, I need to get it back. It's yeah. gonna be a good fight. But he he loved Kobe too. Yeah. Uh, but it means a lot, man. He just you know the, the work ethic uh, that he had. Uh, you know, such a tough competitor. Uh, you know, best of the best. And 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 you can see he was not he, he was not a superstar just by by talent. You can see mm -hmm. that he was he was a a work product. You know, he worked hard. And, and you know, after seeing documentaries and and you know interviews for of him you can see how much uh how much work um, you know in the mental side he did through his career so you know it, it was a really shock moment uh when the accident happened and, and not only for me i think for the rest of the world you can see it uh but a uh, kobe you know he's you know kobe's kobe man he's our jordan of our generation man that's and that's crazy man so one thing i do want to ask you man like obviously somebody asked you about your hobbies right <laughs> So hey, hold hobby. on a second. Hold on, hold oh, on a you second. Good? No, you good? You good? You good? Trust me, you good? You good? So yeah, everybody, man, we got Elvis Andrews in the building, man. This is my guy. Um, I can't see your questions for some odd reason, but I will. I see a couple of good Come questions. Here. So I got, I got, I got my boy here. All right, let's get him in here. Let's get him in here. I'm in the interview. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? Hey. <laughs> hey, good to see you, man. So I gotta ask you, man. So I know you playing some video games over there, right? You got me I, got, I, got, I, I got Lucia too, so. Oh, look, there she is. Oh, there she is. Uh, oh, my. Mind. There she is. Everybody wave at him, man. There you go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, so, so, man, I got to ask you this, man. So, there was a couple of questions in here. And shout out to my guy Mark and a couple other people. They want to know hobbies, right? So, yeah. So, obviously, like, you're a gamer, but you play a different kind of video. Because, like, Obviously, you play NBA 2K, but I remember you telling me you played another totally different game. It's another sport, not baseball, not basketball, but what's your video game of choice? Uh, FIFA. I love soccer, brother. I yeah. think that's that's one of my that's one of my dreams. That's one of my dreams, you know, playing soccer. Uh, growing up, really loving soccer, and uh, you know, I watch Green. soccer all the time. What Real Madrid is my Green. favorite team, uh, and I follow that team all over. Uh, but yes, FIFA is, you know, I love playing, you know, MLB show and everything, but FIFA for me is number one. Do you ever make any special requests on MLB the show? Because I know basketball guys are really hectic about, you know, they need their play to be perfect. So do you ever have to like explain to them a couple things about yourself? Uh, no, not really. Not really. I like it. I like, I like my, my avatar there in the game. Uh, looking good, nice shoes. Uh, yeah. so no, no, I'm, I, I, you know, I just play. I don't, I'm not that. I'm not that competitive in, in the video games, so I'm trying to just have fun. All right, man. So to close this out, man, I love talking music, man. I know you're a music guy because, man, you'll you'll switch the intro up about a hundred times when you come up to the play, man. <laughs> and we know about this, man. I, I tell people all the time. I said, I don't know what we getting out of Elvis this week, man. So we may we may hear a different song, but we're gonna have some fun here. So we, I play this trivia game with all my guests. It's called God Bars. So it's not gonna be trivia. We're gonna make this about opinions. So I gotta ask. Okay. Opinionated questions. This is gonna be hip hop based. So, between Jay Z or Nas, who would you rather listen to? Uh, Jay Z. Okay, that's a good one. That's that's, that's good. Biggie or Tupac? Uh, Biggie. Okay. Wow, that's that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right now, who is the current king of hip hop? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Uh. I mean, for me, always uh, Snoop. But I don't know if it, it's an OG, right? It doesn't matter. It could be a new guy. So, like, we'll make it fun. So, who's the new king of hip hop? So, new king of hip hop. Uh, I think Travis Scott's pretty good right now. You like Travis Scott? I know you like Travis Scott. That's a good one. I usually hear Drake a lot, but I, I like that you named the Texas guy. I like that. All right, so between these three guys, yeah, which one would you prefer, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, or Drake? Uh, 
I mean, I love Drake for sure, but uh, Kendrick Lamar, you know, he's he's in another world. I like Kendrick Lamar. All right, and this is the last question here. What was the first album that you purchased? It, can, it don't have to be hip hop, but what was the first album that you ever purchased? Uh, well, it's gonna, it's gonna be funny. It's gonna be funny. Actually, the first album that I hear was. And it was the, the reason that I hear that album is because he teach me how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, Roscoe Flats. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, man, that's random. Yeah. That's, I never would have thought that. Wow. That's wow. super random. That's, that I mean, that mean, I can tell you the second one. The second one was 50 Cent. 50 okay. Cent was the second yeah. album. Uh, you know, with the Inda Club song, uh, oh, yeah. which is... Uh, you know, he's a legend. He's a legend. But uh, but the first album I bought was Roscoe Fly because I used it to learn English. Man, and that's crazy, man. And once again, congratulations on your citizenship, man. I remember hearing about that, and I thought that was amazing, man, that you got that, man. So I think that's great, man. So I appreciate you, man, coming on, man. This is always fun talking to you. You know me. You have fun all the time. So I mean, it's just enjoyable to get the fans to see this, man. And um. Man, the NFL draft's nice. So I see you with your cowboy gear. Are you are are you dressed up for the cowboy? I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I just got I just got this shirt, you know, supporting supporting the city. Okay, so man, like obviously it's a lot of young talent, man. So what do you think about this Luka Doncic kid, man? And with the Mavericks. Oh man, he's yeah, and nah, he's he's the man. He's the man. And uh I watched him last year for the first time and I was like you know, because you see, you know, you see the games here and then, but you actually go to the to the arena and see him play. Mm -hmm. That kid is, you know, he's from all over the world. Like how young he is and mm -hmm. how he just handle, you know, the court, no matter who he's facing and the situation. Now he reminds me a lot of, you know, like Dirk Nowitzki for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I don't think Dirk did it did it this good, you know, this young or this soon. So, you know, I think he's. You know, he's really ahead of his age and ahead of the game. And, and you know, I can't wait to see, you know, the, the future of uh, Doncic. Man, man. So once again, everybody, man, this guy here, man, is one of my favorite guys to talk to. And like I tell you guys all the time, when it comes out of this all-star vote, I got all these people here now. I'm going to be looking for all y'all to make these all-star votes. <laughs> so, so if you get a major spike, man, that's because all the Cihendo fans, and all the Elvis fans, man, we are, we are definitely going to be keeping on an eye on you, man. But I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, I'm going to close this down and just stay in, but I'm going to close this down. But I appreciate everybody tuning in. Definitely, definitely leave comments. Go on Elvis page, man. Like all the pictures. Do whatever, man. Let's that's, that's, that's keep it going, man. Like This is one of, the, one of my favorite guys and one of the best guys I've ever, ever experienced. Like I've been covering the NBA, I think, 10 years now, right? And I've been covering baseball for a while as well. And yeah. This is like one of my favorite guys and one of the most humble guys that I've ever dealt with, man. So... We're gonna we're gonna be out, man. But everybody, you know, shout out to Elvis and real quick, Elvis. So I did get a special request. So I have a couple of fans here, man, that birthday yes. fans, and they love the range. So I want you to give a shout if you could to I'm gonna name their names. Isela, Nikki, and you know what? Her birthday's not here, but she just loves the range. She loves you. Her name is Marlo. Could you give them a shout out? To to all of them? Yeah, just say Isela, happy birthday. Um, then we have Nikki, whose birthday just passed. She's a Dollar Rage fan. Okay, well, Hisela, Nikki, and what's the other two? Uh, Marlo. Marlo. Oh, Marlo. Hisela, Nikki, and Marlo. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day. Uh, keep it up. Uh, it's your day, so do whatever you do, but stay home. Stay home, stay safe, but enjoy your day. Uh, you know, wish you nothing but the best, a lot of health, and uh, God bless you guys. Man, man, y'all heard my man, man. So, like I said, everybody support this guy. Um, all his stuff will be in the um, description. Be sure to follow him. Um, you got anything coming up, man, for us, like charity, anything that you got going, man, that you want to talk about? Uh, well, yeah, we've been doing, uh, I think last week, uh, we did this big donation. Uh, not only me, I think every, it was like one up to three player of each team. Of Evo. And with MLV, we did donation uh, to the project, uh, like a street project, which is going to be food uh, for all the kids, the, you know, the urban youth that doesn't have, you know, resources and, and, and food uh, all over the country. So 
uh, we did that donation. And I mean, I always try to, you know, help, uh, you know, from, you know, Special Olympic kids. Uh, yeah. I'm, you know, in the next few days, I'm going to do a donation uh, to UNICEF. Uh, and this donation is going to go uh, helping back to Venezuela with the Cody B and everything down there uh, that is not doing good. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm always, you know, up for uh, helping the community here in Venezuela, anywhere in the world, uh, and, and, you know, just doing our part, man. I think that as human being, we all, uh, this time is a perfect time to, you know, to be humble, to help uh, mm -hmm. others. Uh, they're, you know, they're on their needs right now. So, uh, you know, whatever it is, it can be money, it can be time, it can be, you know, a word of encouragement. Uh, anything that anybody can do is, you know, is going to be good. And, and, and that's what I'm trying to do every single day. Yeah, this man is the man for the people. So uh, I guess one last thing. Somebody asked me, what shoe size are you? I'm 11 and a half. Okay, so he's 11 and a half, all my sneaker guys. I see y'all in here asking questions. So, yeah, he's 11 and a half. And you got something <laughs> for him, man. Just, you know, we'll, we'll set up the way to get it to him, and we'll, we'll get him taken care of. So, Elvis, man, I appreciate you. We're going to close this down. Just stay in here after this, and then uh, we'll close it down. But I appreciate you guys. And. Definitely tune into the next one. I don't know who's next, but we're gonna get somebody else on. We're gonna get Elvis back too, man. We're gonna have some fun on this the next. One. We're gonna get some <laughs> back, bro. I appreciate you, Elvis, man. I appreciate all the fans for tuning in, and we're out. <laughs>